My very first science video for Nerdist was on Godzilla's biology. Wow, I need a haircut. Now, two and a half years later, it's time to return to the King of the Monsters because as far as kaiju powers are concerned, Godzilla's famous atomic breath isn't just fire or heat. It's something worse, something much, much worse. Godzilla has been spewing atomic fire for over 60 years, and in the dozens of movies we see it in, it always looks a bit different. However, the breath is often blue, which means that the monster's signature move is more destructive than you think. According to the canon, Godzilla creates its breath by generating an atomic blast inside of itself and directing all of that energy outwards from its mouth. The majority of energy in an atomic blast, 70 to 100%, is in the blast shockwave and heat. The shockwave from an atomic blast is what does most of the destruction that you're familiar with, and if you're close to the center of the fireball, you'd be literally vaporized. But when Godzilla unleashes its atomic breath, it doesn't look <laughs> quite like this footage. So if not the shockwave or the heat, what aspect of an atomic blast are we seeing in Godzilla's gastric gushing? Well, maybe we're seeing the other 5% of an atomic blast's energy, radiation. Radiation may not be the most destructive part of an atomic blast, but it is the scariest part of Godzilla's breath. When an atomic bomb goes off, radiation comes streaming out in the form of gamma rays and electrons and neutrons and alpha particles. Humans are so susceptible to this radiation because it is ionizing radiation, or it has the energy to knock electrons off of atoms and smash molecular structures. Molecular structures like our DNA. This kind of radiation can also ionize the atmospheric gases around an atomic blast, like oxygen, nitrogen, and argon. When electrons are ripped from these gases' atoms, they get excited to the point where they have to shed the excess energy in the form of photons of light. Oxygen and nitrogen make up the majority of our atmosphere, and when they get ionized, they emit photons of blue light. For example, on April 26, 1986, at 1.23 a.m. local time, a few survivors were streaming out of the failing Chernobyl reactor that began its meltdown just minutes before. One of the survivors, Alexander Yuvchenko, reported that there was a beam of blue light extending from the top of the failing reactor out into infinity. That beam was probably ionized atmosphere under the bombardment of catastrophic levels of radiation. This is what Godzilla's atomic breath really is, a nuclear meltdown in its mouth. If Godzilla's atomic breath is dominated by a bluish or greenish light in over 50% of the movies that he is in, I checked, then the real power of this attack is probably coming from ionizing radiation and not so much a blast wave or heat. We see the bluish glow of ionized Earth air much more often. Every time you see a lightning bolt, that's exactly the same phenomenon. That's why lightning is blue. But I brought up Chernobyl because it's a real world example of why Godzilla's atomic breath is even more destructive than we see in the films. Think about it. Every time Godzilla lets loose, there is enough ionizing radiation pouring out of his mouth that it turns the air blue. That's probably enough radiation to transmute particles in the ground to make them radioactive, to give an entire city cancer, to make Tokyo or wherever Godzilla is stomping around uninhabitable for literally thousands of years. That is so much worse than a few buildings blowing up. Why is Godzilla's breath even more powerful than we think? Well, because of its blue glow, the dominant component is probably ionizing radiation that can cause the kind of damage that can destroy generations, not just cities or other monsters. I did not mean to end the video on such a low note, I just go where the science takes me. Don't mess with Godzilla, because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile, like at RandomKing00 did, who suggested the idea for this episode, and on Instagram under the same handle where I'm now posting mini episodes of this show like I did today. So go there and check those out, and Godzilla's too big, his knees would explode. Bye. 
you wouldn't actually always see a blue glow from an emission of radiation unless it's a specific case. There have been times, they're called criticality tests, when enough radiation has been emitted that victims have said there was a blue glow around this piece of radiation, but there wasn't in the air. There was in their eyes. The radiation, the particles were traveling so fast that they were traveling faster than light would through the jelly of your eyes, and the jelly was emitting a blue glow because it was being ionized. Their eyeballs, their eyeball juice was ionizing, and that's why they saw a blue glow. Much worse.